Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DFS show for week five of the NFL. We're going to review the, uh, the value picks for both DraftKings and FanDuel, show you some stackability options for that tournament pool play, and we'll review what happens to our DFS-style survivor pool, and that's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Kurtzman. And I'm Eric Lee. Gary, it is uh, amazing, this, D- this DFS. Really another exciting week. And I love this show because you do a great job with, with DraftKings. There are shows out there that do DraftKings, but there's so few that do FanDuel. So we are, if you play FanDuel, you want to pay attention to our different picks. Uh, and Gary's got some great ones for DraftKings. Let's take a look at the previous uh, poll. We started a brand new contest. And for those that are not familiar with it, we asked our viewers uh, to analyze the, the five guys that Gary picked and the five guys I picked, one at each position, a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, a tight end, and a defense. And which team do you think would score more? We had 21 of those 35 people back Team Gary, and they're not happy today. Um, so uh, Sorry, folks. That one's on me. 14 people uh, back Team Eric and survived to the next week. And now we're going to be making new picks. And those 14 people need to decide, are you going to stay with me? Or is it time to jump off that bandwagon and move over to Team uh, Gary? More on that uh, in a little bit. I actually wanted to highlight uh, those 14 people who are brave enough to... uh, follow my crazy picks. Uh, I just want to quickly debrief about last week. Um, so one of the negatives of, uh, of the shows is we make a commitment to pick players uh, on Wednesday. Uh, I did that for Chris Carson. Unfortunately, on Sunday, he was a late scratch, so he gave me zero points. Um, his replacement, Mark Davis, ran for over 100 yards and two TDs, which would have been Chris Carson. I would have gone well over 100 points if that happened. But uh, I'm happy with how all my other picks did. Um, what about your team? Well, Fitzmagic turned Fitz Tragic, <laughs> and OJ Howard uh, left the game in the first quarter, That's injured. He's going to be break. out two to four. Yeah, it wasn't a break, it was a tear. But I'm bumped. Anyway, bottom line is hey, you know what? If you back the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week, they did so well in weeks one through three and so poorly in week four. Uh, that's the way it goes. You know, it's tough to predict, and nobody could have guessed, but uh, the best team, with the best offense in football uh, was one of the worst offenses last week, and that killed my team, pure and simple, Eric. It was obvious Michael Trubinsky would throw five TDs. How many people or had? his brother Mitch. <laughs> or Mitch. Way, six TDs, actually. Six TDs. Counting okay. at home. All right. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, let's talk about this upcoming week. So who are the guys who are going to represent Team Eric? We'll start at the quarterback situation. And I was really surprised, Gary, that QB10, he was really the last on FanDuel to me to be the real quality quarterback before it starts to get really scary. At $7,500, Carson Wentz. He's back. The rust is off. He threw over for over 300 yards. He's got his pal back, Alshon Jeffries. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they play Minnesota, 23 ranked defense. I really like uh, Carson Wentz this week at QB. I I, I got to. I'm waiting for that Minnesota pass defense to turn it around because they've been one of the best in the NFL for the last two plus years. They've been terrible this year, but they have the same personnel. In fact, they have the same coordinator for God's sake. So I. I, if there's if there's risk in that pick, it's that Minnesota should eventually start behaving like Minnesota, and then that's a, that's a team that you do not want your quarterback to face, pure and simple. I'll be honest. I was a little surprised that the over or unders are only the mid forties this game. I actually think of this more as a shootout. That Minnesota offense has been productive. That's going to force Philadelphia, who's playing at home, uh, to to throw. We'll see. I'm happy with Carson Wentz as my QB. I'm very excited about my running back. When I saw that he had slipped uh, to 7,600 and he's an RB8, um, I said, I want some of that. (laughs) So, uh, 
David Johnson, um, I criticized the coaching staff uh, last week for only getting them 14, 14, and 16 touches in the first three weeks. I think they watch our show, Gary. Because uh, they said, you know what? We got to get him a few more touches. And he got 25 this past week. Um, my big problem always with Arizona is game script. They are one of the worst teams in the NFL. However, look who they play this week. Um, they play San Francisco, who doesn't have their starting quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, Arizona will be in this game. Um, and David Johnson should figure heavily in it. So David Johnson is my running back. Yeah, I mean, you know what? If you can tell me that they're going to give him, uh, you know, 22 to 25 touches, I love that pick. Three of the four games, they gave him, you know, 14 to 16, which means he doesn't have the opportunity to do well at all. Which David Johnson are you going to get, I think, is going to be the answer of is that a good pick or not. All right, at wide receiver, at spending $6,400, I'm going to pick the Titans wide receiver, Corey Davis. So, look. Corey Davis is obviously the number one target in Tennessee, but more important to Corey Davis' success is who is throwing him the ball. In the two games in which Marcus Mariota has been playing, he has averaged 14, count them, 14 targets, uh, 7.6 uh, receptions, and over 100 yards. Um, so I really uh, like Corey Davis this week going up against a Buffalo team uh, that has an average defense. And finally, at tight end, I, I needed to save a little bit of money here because I spent a lot of money uh, on quarterback, running backs, and wide receivers. And I found what I think is a gold mine uh, down at bottom of the list on FanDuel for $4,600, Vance Johnson. So, Vance McDonald uh, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, if you're thinking Jesse James is the lead receiving tight end of Pittsburgh, wake up and pay attention to the last three weeks. It's become McDonald, and I had to get some way to the exposure of the Atlanta-Pittsburgh game, which is the highest over-under on the board. So, um... I, I really like this uh, option. Uh, Atlanta has a 28th ranked pass defense. I'm going with Vance McDonald to get involved uh, in the, the passing game. He's gotten uh, four and a half uh, receptions over the last two weeks. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with him. 87 uh, yards again uh, after the last uh, uh, couple of weeks per game. All right, final pick is Tennessee. I'm going with uh, them at my defense. I don't really need to explain a lot. They actually have a pretty good defense. They're ranked um, 12 sacks, ranks them 7th in the NFL. But it's more about who they're going up against. They're going up against Buffalo. Um, Buffalo is ranked 31st in offense this year. There's only 32 teams in the NFL. Um, Josh Allen uh, showed his youth last week. Um, So, you know, I, I feel comfortable with Tennessee. So, to review, my picks... Uh, for Team Eric is Carson Wentz, David Johnson, Corey Davis, Vance McDonald, and the Tennessee defense. And th- those are those are great picks. I love all your last three picks. Um, the, that means you uh, didn't like my first two. <laughs> <laughs> David Johnson is outraged. Just tell me how many he, touches he's going to get, and then he, I'll tell you. He's, he's going to uh, yeah. run fierce. So, uh, all right, so let me, let me talk to you about my team. And if my team... As weak as Tampa Bay played last week, and therefore as south as my team might because of that, that's how strong my team is this week. Are you ready? Ask yourself one question, folks. Over the last 10 NFL games, because that's a pretty big sample size, who is the highest scoring fantasy quarterback in the NFL? Eh, Sorry, time's up. Blake Bortles. Inconceivable. I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. He's the third most rushing yards of any NFL quarterback. And I got to tell you, when Jacksonville gets behind, they sling it. And I mean sling it on more than 70% of their plays. It's not so much Blake Bortles. It's the opportunity he gets. And he will have that and more because they are going against Kansas City, which quite literally has the crappiest defense in all of football. Some of that's because uh, crappiest pass defense, I should say. Um, and that's because people have to pass on him so much. 
Um, but the reality is, look, they, 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 they're the worst pass defense in all of football, literally 32nd, and they have the second best offense in all of football, which means this puppy's going to be a shootout. Jacksonville is going to be throwing the ball 70% of the time. You can bank on it. That's what they do when they get behind, as they almost surely will against Kansas City. That means Blake Bortles in a shootout, number one quarterback over the last 10 games, and He's only fifty or five hundred bucks. He's he's I mean he's he's outside the top ten in uh, price wise in QB. It's just it's I, I just don't think DraftKings valued that one uh, well at all. Um, sneaky good pick with Leonard Fournette being out. You know they're going to throw the ball more. Speaking of sneaky good pick with Leonard uh, Fournette being out, TJ Yeldon. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, that is my running back. He only cost you fifty six hundred bucks, not the eight thousand plus that. You know, the top running backs you're getting. And, folks, look, he's a great pass catcher. And he's a pretty darn decent runner, too. And i got to tell you, when Leonard Fournette is in, T.J. Yeldon has scored double digits. When Leonard Fournette is out, which he will be this year, T.J. Yeldon has averaged 20, point, 20 fantasy points per game. You can get exposure to that and more because, remember, Kansas City, this is going to be a shootout. And when they throw, their dump-off option is T.J. Eldon. He only costs 5600 bucks. I, I love that pick. Um, Tyler Boyd is my receiver. 5700 This guy is somehow priced outside the top 20, and yet he's been a top 15 receiver all season long. His trajectory has only gone up as the season's gone on. And John Ross is out, and Tyler Eifert is out. You know, he's also really cheap on FanDuel. Tyler Boyd is going to be in a lot of my lineups this week in DFS. Yeah, I, I, it's another one of those. I think DraftKings and FanDuel haven't quite caught up to the pricing yet. Love me some Tyler Boyd. Um, Jared Cook, ask yourself one question, folks. Who's the top tight end in football this year in yards? Who's the top tight end in football in targets? Who's the top tight end in football in touchdowns? The answer to all three, Jared Cook of your Oakland Raiders. And yet he's outside the, uh, the top five in pricing, only cost you $4,800. Bottom line, against the L.A. Chargers, the Raiders are going to be behind. They're going to have to throw all day. And the Raiders' leading receiver, Jared Cook, only cost you $4,800. Finally, on defense, Carolina. Carolina, $3,300. They are the second highest rated defense in football, so you've got to pay up for them. But you've saved enough money in these bargains that you can afford it. At least I can for my team, $3,300. They're facing the New York Giants, fourth worst offense, third most, uh, sorry, third worst offense, fourth most sacks yeah, given up in football. Love me this Carolina defense, worth the money every time. So to review, Blake Bortles, TJ Yeldon, Tower Boy, Jared Cook, and your Carolina Panther defense. As you look at both of our teams, it's interesting. I spent my money in the quarterback and running back uh, position, and you spent your money more in the uh, Tight end. Go to the back end, tight end yeah. defense. Yeah, so uh, we'll there were see. Better bargains at uh, QB and wide receiver and running back. We'll see what strategy uh, works out here. Real quick, a tournament stack that I really like is the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Russell Wilson at 7,200 and Doug Baldwin at 6,700. They play the Rams. The Rams have been scoring like mad, so therefore the Seahawks will have to throw more than they've ever had to throw so far this year. Um, Doug Baldwin is healthy. Um, they're playing at home. Uh, I love that stack. Yeah, and of course, Akeem Tlaib is not going to play, so that helps out even more. Um, my stack, and I think you could have guessed this, frankly, from my team, um, Blake Bortles to Keelan Cole. I mean, again, Blake Bortles has been your number one fantasy quarterback over the last 10 games, and he faces the, the best pass defense you can possibly face in the Kansas City Chiefs. And Keelan Cole is his number one receiver in yards and in targets, and he's getting some red zone looks too. I love me that stack, Blake Bortles to Keenan Cole. Oh, and by the way, incredible bargains. Blake Bortles, QB uh, 14, Keelan Cole, wide receiver 34 for the number one option on a team. You, you almost never see that, folks. That'll wrap up our DFS show. If you haven't yet, please hit the red subscriber button and then the bell icon to be notified of our future shows. And until our next show, we'll see you next time. See you next time.